All right, hello everyone. My name is Henry, and welcome to another video. Today we're doing a tutorial. We're doing a tutorial with Project Felix. Uh, I'm sorry about the experimenting with Project Felix, where the video was recorded in the wrong resolution. Half the video was out of sync with the video. I don't know why. QuickTime did not like it. You could clearly hear the fan on my Mac spinning in the background, and halfway, or like not halfway, but towards the end of the video. The audio was suddenly just cut off completely, and I managed to speed up the footage, no, speed down the footage rather than speed it up, which was my intent. I set it to do 100%. You know, I was, I was stupid. Um, and uh, it was a disaster, but it got a lot of hits, so that's why I haven't removed it. I might still do that, though, we'll see. Um, however, I've decided to make good on that. So here we are doing a proper Project Felix tutorial. This is two days after it was released, so I've had some time to tinker and run some stuff. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a realistic 3D render of a cover, like a DVD cover. Uh, so we're going to be using both Project Felix and Photoshop CC 2017 in this. Um, so stay along for the ride. A couple of things to note here. Uh, number one, because I feel Felix has been advertised to be using stock so much, I thought it would be fun to actually use stock for this. So we're going to go ahead and begin by just creating a new project um, and we're going to immediately resize it to fill the screen. And then, as is normal practice, just immediately save it. So, uh, I'm on, you know what, let's save it to the pictures um, and we're going to call it Realistic DVD Cover Render. Now, I could go into detail about how I made this really detailed 3D cover in, uh, in, in 3DS Max, uh, and, that, and then I could just like add that to the description. But I feel that ruins the point of an application that is meant to be for designers who are not familiar or aren't used to 3D programs, or like using anything that is 3D, but rather goes to like a 3D tool, like contacts a 3D modeler and ask him, hey, can you make this for me? I feel like the pro point of this is to get you away from that by having these models to begin with and then allowing you to add your uh, to add more using stock so what we're going to go and do is we're going to head into the libraries panel and uh, once that loads you can see i've prepared this felix testing one um and we're going to grab something for Billy stop now there's a bit of an issue at the moment uh which i have already posted as feedback here um which is that you are unable to add uh, you, like, when you search here, it'll find images and everything from Adobe Stock, which is fine. But there's no easy way to um, search it, like, to, to, to specify that you want only 3D models. So I even searched for the specific title of the object, and it only found images. So we're going to go here on the Adobe Stock website. I've gone ahead and opened it here. And this is the one we're going to be using. So this is an official adobe 3d model and awesomely enough this is actually one of the free ones there's quite a few of them mainly product related or advertisement related ones that are free uh which means you can license them for free um so in our case what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go down to the file id uh which is right here but what's easier is to just copy it from the url up here copy um and now we have the uh file id and the cool thing about adobe stock is if we go here search and then just use control V to say paste it in, it'll find nothing but that. Um, because we specify the specific file ID. So just use the web interface for Adobe Stock to find your 3D models. Uh, just to show you that, if we head to the front page, uh, you can go down here and you can press 3D. And then you can choose 3D models or 3D lights or materials if that's what you're after. And now you can choose uh, that specific one, which means it's a low price and then press update. And then, for example, as you can see here, it'll say what's free. So, for example, this splash, which they used in some of the marketing material, I know for a fact, is free. This model of a monitor is free. Um, that laptop is free. Uh, and these are really useful for mockups, right? Like realistic mockups. Hey, you're making an iPhone app. Download this, and then you can add um, the, your screenshot of your iPhone app on that. Uh, a lot of cool stuff is free. And there's also the DVD case that I ended up using for this. So what you'll learn in this tutorial, you can easily use um, in other situations as well. And this splash is what they use for the, uh, the, the like all the advertisement for Felix with the uh, soda and all that. You'll probably find the bottle somewhere here as well. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and head back into Felix. So we're just going to go ahead and press this little 
save to Felix testing, which is the library I'm currently in. As you can see, it's already been licensed. Uh, again, it's free, so you don't pay anything. You don't even need to have a subscription to Adobe Stock. Just find it, just like license, and it's yours. Uh, you can do that from within here as well. I actually kind of recommend that. So press the save to Felix testing, and depending on your internet connection, that's going to download into your Creative Cloud library, which, you know, it's taking longer than I'd like it to right now. Um, I might speed this up. Okay, there we go. Um, and then you can either pull it into your workspace or like I prefer to do, just click it. And then we'll get loading. Now, the advantage of clicking it is it'll place it in the middle of your workspace immediately, which in my case is what I need or what I want. So from there, we can go ahead and we can sort of zoom out a bit. I'm going to go ahead and actually use the hand tool to lift myself up a bit like this. So we could do a couple of things here. You could, for example, use import a background by choosing one here. I don't really have any. And honestly, I have no need for a background for this. This is going to be like a realistic kind of studio type thing. Uh, what I will do is I'll set the background color to be completely white. Um, but no background image because this is going to be sort of like, it's going to look like it's been taken a photo off in a studio. And at that point, I will not need a realistic background. From there, we're going to head to the render tab. Um, one thing you might be noticing is I'm on Windows this time around instead of on Mac. And the primary reason for that is because last time, as you might remember, when I ran this on a Mac, my Mac was having terrible, terrible fan noise because this program is very heavy. Uh, my Windows PC is a lot more stronger than that Mac, so that's why I'm running it here. Um, although I do prefer Mac for anything Adobe related. Um, so uh, normally I'd set this to uh, highest or at least high. But since this is for a video, and even if I will be speeding this up, I want this to go fast. So I'm going to set it at low fast. And then we're going to say the name of this is going to be Realistic 3D. I held in the shift key when I wrote that 3D render. And we are going to change that so that it instead takes it to the pictures. So select folder. And we want it to be a PSD layer. You can do a PNG, but it's just easier to work with a layered PSD file instead. And then we're just going to press the render button. And then I am, of course, going to speed this up like I tried to do in my last Felix video. And uh, then we'll go ahead and open this in Photoshop and uh, continue work on it there. All right, so there we are. So the render is now complete. Um, as I specified, we should now find it in our pictures folder. And there it is. We've got the AFD, which is the... I kind of like how they've kind of gone with a common image stream here. We'll get between PSD and ASD. I don't quite get what the ASD says for. Can we... Uh, I'm not going to do any research on that. Um, here's obviously the cover we're going to be using. We're going to be using the imitation game. Uh, two reasons for that. Number one, it's made by the director called uh, Morton Trildum, um, who two things about him. Number one, and these are two plot points. Number one, he's a Norwegian director who's been making a lot of good movies, including this one. Number two, his latest movie, The Passengers, which I hope to see soon, recently just came out. Um, unfortunately, there's no DVD cover or Blu-ray cover for that out yet. So I thought just using the imitation game, which was his last big movie, was a good idea. So let's just go and right click this Photoshop file and we should see that open in Photoshop CC 2017. And um, here we are. So that opens up. And no, I'm not going to create a library. Um, okay, so. File Explorer, please. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. A little interruption happened. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just pull this into a Photoshop document here. And then we're just going to go and hold. Sh and then we're just going to sort of. Let's see. It's control. So, do, so if you hold control while you do this. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. So I'm a little bit. And then you just sort of select the edge. And we're actually going to have to zoom out a bit here to be able to get this full scale here. Hold control. <laughs> it's funny to look at how it warps when you do this. Um, put that down there. And, and, and of course, you can do a much more exact job when you're doing this. But this is, in essence, what you do. You just 
hold control and then just pull it to the order so it sort of warps itself into place. until you've got it the way you want it to be. Like that, and it screwed up again. <laughs> it's not, it, it's a bit of a finicky job, but then again, you'd of course be doing a lot more harder work on this if you're doing it seriously. There we go. That looks pretty good. Like we got a nice render of the imitation game DVD covers. So if you're making like your own movie, you're ahead of like some, how many, easily, you can now easily use uh, Project Felix to make realistic product renders. And as I said, if we go ahead and head up here to Adobe Stock, there are so many different models. You can get uh, a CD sleeve. You can get a food cart. Food, um, like, I can't see what it says. Uh, you can get a coffee cup. Um, for some reason, a paper cutout heart costs money. Uh, you can get actual, like, signs and uh, a table. Oh, actually, that's like a bus stand. Like, you can make advertisement mock-ups, you can make CD mock-ups, you can make... Um, and, and, like, if you want to pay, you can do that as well. With, in my opinion, fairly fair prices, although some of these are a bit expensive. It's listed in Norwegian Corona for me because I'm from Norway, but it'll be in US dollars as well. Um, you can also see here we've got an open case if you want to label the CD. Uh, CD sleeve... All sorts of different options um, for doing this, for, for making the, for using these models. Uh, and this is just the free stuff. You can get paid stuff as well. Uh, if we set the price to high here, right? It's so like we just unspecify all these and then update. We'll get a lot more choices. And again, you can use something like Turbo Squid as well to get other models and import them. The only advantage of the Adobe stock ones are that they are, of course, optimized for Felix. And of course, there will be added more of this by both Adobe and other people. To the stock market so that's awesome so that is it for this tutorial if you enjoyed it please tell me down in the comments and i'll make sure to make more tutorials on this exact topic or not this exact topic but on project felix and other adobe programs if anyone's interested in that so thank you for watching don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe all that nonsense and uh check out project felix in the link in the description yeah thank you